Hey guys, what's up? We're going to Toronto today to do some game hunting in the stores there. It's gonna be awesome. The day turned out to be like this, very rainy, unfortunately. But that's okay, what matters are the stores and the game hunting. I'm here with my buddy Dan Jeldon. Hey great guys. guy, yeah, great guy here. This is a great guy because he helped me a lot when I got here to Canada. He's been a huge help so far and he's, you know, an awesome fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to Toronto. Are you excited, man? Oh, I'm absolutely excited. Gonna hit the best game store I know in Toronto and then maybe an anime shop and all right. some other stuff on the way back. We're gonna cover all of that. What's the name of the store we're visiting? ANC Games. ANC Games, the, the famous, popular, outstanding ANC Games in Toronto. Yep. Hopefully All right. we're gonna find some good deals. Yeah, hopefully. So yeah, we may be excited, but maybe our wallets aren't as excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna hurt. Oh, but it's yeah. gonna hurt for a good reason. Oh yeah. This definitely. is all about video game collecting. All right, so let's begin. Here it is, A&C Games in Toronto. This store is in Chinatown. Yeah, this is Chinatown, the center of Toronto. Uh, so we ran into some problems here in this store and we had sort of like a huge disappointment. I'll explain later. Let's just say that most of the prices here were, were Overpriced. That's all I'll say for now. I'll explain later. All right, here we are in Oshawa, like one hour and a half away from Toronto, and we're gonna visit this place, Games, or rather G A M E S. Okay, <laughs> we're an original name. So here we are inside the store of games. It's not as big as ANC Games or P Market in Belleville, but it's a hell of a store. Look at all the games they have on each system. This is their Wii section. They usually put uh, the most interesting games, or rather expensive or sought after games, at the top in these plastic boxes. These cases, I mean. And all the other more common and generic games are down there, just in their normal cases. It's Natural Doctrine, screw that game, man. Brutally hard and also brutally bad. Anyway, moving on, PS4 section, PS3 section, some plushies down there. It was a pretty interesting store, I gotta admit that I wasn't expecting that this much. I was expecting much less compared to AMC games. So the place may this place may feel like a little bit crowded, but in a good sense, I mean you get this feeling of welcome once you get inside the store, once you step inside. It's my buddy Dan. <laughs> and these are the guys who run the store. Pretty cool guys. We talked to, to them for a while and they were pretty awesome. I mean we had a lot of things in common. They look like nice people true gamers and that's what's awesome about you know resellers sometimes 
most of them are true gamers at heart. Xbox 360 section, Xbox, original Xbox, 3DS, PS Vita. PS Vita games, like I've said before many times, are most of them are overpriced, always, no matter the reseller. I don't know why. Maybe because, maybe because they're hard to find, they're hard to get, and to have them available to the public. Switch games, Game Boy, loose cartridges, Game Boy Advance, loose cards also. Some Dreamcast here, Nintendo 64 games. Nintendo 64 games, you know, I'm not, I'm not a collector of those, but I just can't fathom the fact that they're way cheaper in Mexico than they are than what they are in the US or Canada. And I mean it. I mean everything else is more expensive in Mexico, almost everything else, but Nintendo 64, I don't know why they're more expensive. Super Nintendo, wow, there's an earthbound out up there. Jesus, the complete box. That's like a four five hundred dollar game? Wow. Super Nintendo loose cards. They are as expensive as they are in Mexico. Perhaps a little bit more. This is $50. 50 Canadian dollars. That's the equivalent of... I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking 35, 38 US dollars. NES games. You know, uh, what I like about this place, it's not only the, uh, the personnel working here, or, or just this comfortable feeling when you're looking around, when you're checking out all these games, there's just, there's just so much to see that even if the place is small, it's hard to look at everything. I mean, you come here and you're seriously gonna spend quite a while. These are my pickups, <laughs> we'll show them later in the video. Lost Kingdoms, you can clearly see the prices there, Canadian dollars, of course. Guy dropped this down to $30, fortunately, that was pretty much the only discount that I have in this place. Which was kind of a bummer, but I only bought four games, so yeah. This is another section of the store, which is action figures, toys, and all that jazz. Overall, it's a pretty cool place. Check it out if you ever come to Oshawa. Check this place out. I mean, it's not that great for one simple reason. Everything is great, don't take me wrong. I love everything about this store except one thing, and that is the prices. I mean, this place was not as overpriced as AMC games. Like I said, I'll explain that later. But if you paid attention to some of the prices, even even the prices that I'm about that I paid, I mean, uh, during my visit to this store, you're gonna get the feeling that okay, these are not the best prices. Some of them are really cheap. Some of them are really expensive. Like these guys, um, I don't know their strategies. For some reason, they seem a little bit awkward. To, to me, I mean, I, I still think P Market is a much better place to buy video games because the guys are always open to deals there, and that's what I liked about them. And here, uh, the manager was a tough nut to crack. He wasn't very willing to give me a discount. Let's check out this Gothic edition for 30 bucks. Only well, you know, PC games, they're always, most of them are cheap. I don't collect PC games, so yeah. But yeah, it's a cool place. All these special editions they own are great. Uh, some of them were actually very cheap. I was very tempted to get some, but the others were kind of expensive as they always are. Great place. Prices are, well, some of them are okay, some of them are not. Just come to this place if you ever drop by Oshawa and check this place out and have your own opinion about it. And look at this Tales of Xilia Collector's Edition box. Anyway, games, G-A-M-E-S, Oshawa, great place. Hey guys, so I hope you enjoyed that little trip. Now I'm here to do two things. One, to explain what the hell happened with the ANC fiasco, ANC games fiasco. And the second one to show what I got to what I picked up. It's not that much, unfortunately, but it is something. So, what the hell happened? Uh, why didn't I cover AMC games? Well, like I said in the video, um, unfortunately, prices were like really high, really steep. I don't know what the hell happened there. I mean, it's known that some uh, retro stores, some retro places, 
uh, start small, then they grow up, they grow bigger and bigger until, I don't know, maybe their egos get inflated by all the popularity and they rise the prices. I mean, I've seen a lot of, not a lot, but I've seen some, some retro stores in Guadalajara, Mexico. Uh, in the same situation, I knew some of these guys from the beginning. They weren't even, they, they just had this small place in a flea market and then eventually they grew and grew until they got like way big and you went to their places and saw the prices and was like yeah I'm not gonna buy anything here anymore like never again because something happens that they get a lot of clients a lot of customers and therefore they can have the luxury of just raising the prices of their games anyway uh, I don't know if that's what happened with AMC games, that's just an hypothesis, I have no idea. Dan told me he was there like a year and something ago and the prices were fine, but now that we uh, went together, it was like, it was like, yeah, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say because the reason why I didn't cover this store, I didn't show anything of the insights, even though they did give me permission to do it. The reason is be precisely because of that, because I think a store, even though it may, it may look beautiful, it may look amazing, uh, and it may have great employees or whatever, it all comes down to the prices. It's a business. Come on, it's a business. And if you have really high prices, and if you can't cut down good deals, people are just not gonna recommend your store. Maybe other people are still gonna buy from there, but most people like me, for example, are not going to recommend that place. I don't think I'm ever going back to AMC games again. So what happened is that we, the second we went there, after the, the, the shooting that, that I showed in the video, uh, we went inside and I was like, wow, I'm like surprised, amazed. The place looked incredible and amazing. But I went straight to the PSP section because they had this promotion of uh, buy two games, get one for free. And the prices there were a little high, but that's normal. Whenever there's a, there's a promotion like this, uh, stores usually raise the prices to cut losses to a minimal. It happens, it's understandable. I've done it before too. When I was, when I was a reseller, I did the same. So I picked three games and I was carrying them with me the whole time, but I, I was still unsure about the price. I was like, I'm overpaying a little bit for these games, even with the promotion, so I don't know. I'm gonna think about it as I, as I look around. So I asked, uh, there was one of the managers there, I asked for permission to, to shoot the video, and he said, yes, yeah, sure. I said, Just, I don't know, one or two minutes, an overall video, that, that's all, not an in-depth, thoroughly video, so nothing like that. So he said, yes, but I said, I'm just gonna look around first, and then I'll do the shooting. And as, I, as me and Dan began looking around, quickly realized that something was off, like PS2 prices, PS3, PS4, Nintendo DS, Nintendo 3DS, PS Vita, oh my god, like, oh my, I almost had a heart attack just looking at these PS Vita prices, so we just realized, we quickly realized that something was off, that these prices were really high, games that are like $10 like everywhere else in, in this country or, or in this province, Ontario, in, in that place were like $20. $15 games are like $30. $20 games are like $40 here. Like Jesus. I don't know. You know, it just turned me down. And there, there was also this incident with this other YouTuber, uh, Eri Erika Sable. Uh, she, she works there. And please don't bother her. <laughs> don't stalk her because she clearly hates that. Uh, we, she just came in rushing through the store and I was like, hey, Erica, you know, hi. And she just said, said something that I didn't understand and she seemed a little like in a hurry and pissed off, not in a good mood, and she went away and I was like, okay. Then I did uh, some comment to one of the employees there and well, he got me off wrong, you know, he got a little like, yeah, I don't talk uh, about people behind their back. And I was like, ah. Jesus, so hard. So yeah, it, it was not only, um, I, I was not only bummed because of the prices, I was also like tense already, like I, I just don't want to be here anymore. 
So all I ended up buying, I, I quit the promotion. I, I was going to buy three games for the price of two. And I, you know, just left them there. And all I got was Eat Dry Union. And I couldn't leave this one behind because I'm, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not the biggest fan of this game. But I do enjoy it a lot. And it's just one of those hidden gems, rare RPGs on the PSP that I need to. And I needed this game so badly. And I've been looking for this since many, many years ago. So now that I finally had it. Um, I, f I paid $28, taxes included, and usually this game f goes in this country for a little bit less, like $24, $23, so I did overpay a little bit, but I didn't mind, you know, I just needed this game in my collection, and that's all, you know, I paid for this game, and they took forever looking for a replacement case, because the original case was, like, full of stickers, and, you know, yeah, that's really annoying. And they also couldn't find the UMD on their carpet. They had this huge carpet full of UMD games, not in alphabetical order. So imagine, we wasted a lot of time in that, in that place. And there was also a lot of traffic, like I said in the video. Uh, there was a lot of traffic in Toronto. I can't believe this city is just like my city in Mexico. Just full of people, full of traffic everywhere. Normally, we would make, we would do an hour and a half from Bellevue to Toronto, we did almost three hours. And from to, from Toronto to uh, Oshawa, you usually do, according to them, like one hour, one hour and 20. We did like two hours and a half. It was, it was hell, and it was also raining half of the day. When we arrived at Oshawa, it stopped raining, thankfully, but uh, half of the day was like pretty bummed up. So that's why I didn't show anything in Toronto. So now I feel like I owe you guys a proper Toronto video. Come on, because it's the biggest city in Ontario. It's not the capital, but it's like the biggest, uh, the greatest, most important city in, in, in Ontario. Probably one of the most important in the entire country. So I feel like I owe you some proper game hunting or at least just a little trip, another trip, a proper trip uh, with other places to show. But what happened at ANC Games, you know, completely blew me off, it turned me off. I lost all motivation. And I just, I just said to Dan, you know what, let's just go. But hey, uh, we went straight to Oshawa afterwards. Uh, we got a pretty good deal there. Well, he and I uh, bought a bunch of games, not too many. And the problem with Oshawa, like I said in the video, was uh, that that store, G-A-M-E-S, <laughs> games, uh, is that the prices are, well, um, half of the store is overpriced. I'm sorry, I don't think these guys are going to watch this video, but if they ever do, Sorry guys, but half of your place is overpriced, like seriously, you need to get your shit together because those prices are just not fair. But the other half is quite fair. So I took advantage of that and picked up a bunch of games. Uh, the first of all, uh, I picked this one. It was the only one that I was missing. You know, I'm not exactly a huge fan of this series, but it's uh, a series that a lot of people know me for. The Agarist War series, underrated games, total grind fests, full of fan service, you know, oh my god, anyway, I'm not the biggest fan of these games, but I do like them, I do enjoy them, and this was the, this is the only one that I was missing from my collection, the second one, there's three of them, well, there's four, there's this marriage game also on, the, on PC, I don't give a shit about that one, but this one, and it's, it's the only one that I was missing, Record of Agarus War 2, I also got an impeccable copy well, the box is not impeccable, but the discs are like in impeccable condition of Final Fantasy Anthology. I was missing this one. I had it at some point a long time ago before I went to England. It's one of the games, one of the many games I had to sell. And mine was like, an, I don't know, 9 out of 10. This is like 10 out of 10. The discs are Jesus. And they weren't resurfaced. Because they do resurface some of the, the games there. When they are all pretty, you know, scratched up. But this one was like... Perfect. And I, I looked thoroughly because I thought it was gonna look it was gonna be resurfaced and it wasn't. You know, both discs just are like mean condition. I paid 30 bucks, 30 Canadian dollars for it. That is the equivalent of 20 something US dollars. But anyway, totally worth it. I could have gotten it for a cheaper price somewhere else, but every copy that I, that I have found of this game in this country looks like shit <laughs> so yeah I was pretty excited to get this one and 
I also got Lost Kingdoms. Oh, I was so excited to see this game. But at the same time, I wasn't because I am not, again, uh, the biggest fan of this game. Uh, I just enjoyed my experience. I think it's a hidden gem from company from software. That's right, the people who made Dark Souls did this game. And it's just amazing because it's also on mint condition. Well, I, this one is like 9 out of 10. And I paid $30 for it. I swore myself that I would never pay more than $20 for it. But this is one of those games that just keep going up. Each year, every time that I see this game, it's more expensive. So I was like, you know, screw this. I'm, I'm paying the $30. Well, I got these three games, and I also got Ragnarok Tactics. I picked it up in um, P Market like uh, some weeks ago. So it's a complete in-box version of this game. You know, this is one of my absolute favorite PSP RPGs. I was really glad to get it. Thank you, P Market. I paid 30 bucks for it, and that's a really fair price for this game. And but in, in Oshawa, I picked the special edition in Japanese. The guy wanted 30 bucks for it, and I was like, sure. I mean, it's a big box. Come with. Uh, let me show you. It also has the game in impeccable condition along with the box. Probably gonna put this game, the American version, in it and get rid of the Japanese version, but I don't know. Comes with this, I don't know how to call this, not even in Spanish, like just a piece of cardboard with three new classes at the back of it. Looks pretty interesting. There's also an art book. I was gonna make a video, uh, an unboxing video about this one, but since my Odin Sphere unboxing video didn't do so well, I was like, eh, nah, unboxings, they don't work. Yeah, uh, has all the characters, the classes, and the, 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 the areas, the maps, the enemies, what almost every single art book should have. Yeah, pretty cool art book. It also has. Uh, well, game here in this cardboard box, which looks kind of cool, and a soundtrack. Another one of these boxes. Soundtrack with 27 songs. It's the full soundtrack. Yep, it is a full soundtrack. That's really awesome. These two kids, I don't recognize them from the game. I beat this game twice, and I don't remember these two kids. Why? Maybe they are in the Japanese version only. Seal. So yeah, I was like. Great condition, seal soundtrack complete. Thirty dollars. That's like the equivalent of twenty-two or twenty-three US dollars. It was a no-brainer. You know, I really love this game. One of my absolute favorite on the PSP, and I just I already I already had the original, the North American release, so I said, why the hell not? But yeah, that's all. That's all I picked up. I wish I could pick more, but the guy. I mean, all these games that I bought on the Oshawa store. A uh, guy wouldn't come down to the, with the price. I could have bought more, and I was going to, as a matter of fact. But since I noticed that this guy, uh, he, he was just a tough nut to crack, he only discounted me like $5 out of the 100 and something that I paid. So he was like, okay, so Oshawa, uh, the store games there, pretty cool place. Guys, there are amazing people. We talked a lot, we also wasted a lot of time. We also spent, let's not say wasted, we spent a lot of time with these guys talking just about video games collecting and prices and JRPGs. It was pretty cool, um, but the prices there, you know, these guys, please don't become the next ANC games, like seriously, get your shit together, you're a great place, a great place, and I loved it. So that's it for this video, sorry this took so long, but I seriously needed to give a long explanation why the trip was planned to show Toronto stores, and I ended up shooting nothing, <laughs> barely anything. Someday, I'll, I promise, I'll go back to Toronto, of course I will, and do a proper shooting of, I don't know, at least two or three places over there. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!